cool. All right, so uh, I want to preface this with the fact that I haven't been on stage for a talk in over two and a half years. So if I seem a little nervous, it's because I'm a lot nervous. <laughs> so, um, you know, just uh, bear with me. But I'm going to do my best. Today I'm talking about augmenting Node.js with WebAssembly. Um, so yeah, let's talk about that. But first, let's talk about um, my cats. So uh, I have a fun fact about myself. Uh, my name is actually from Star Wars. And by my name, I mean my whole name. Cassian Andor and Sabine Wren is how I got my name. Um, if you want to ask me more about that later, that's fine. I, have, I am a they, them causing mayhem. Uh, these are my cats. Uh, the one on the left, her name is Arya. The little one on the right, his name is Apollo. Uh, and the big one on the right, his name is Ace. And those are, those are my fur babies. I love them to pieces. Um, yeah. Uh, so we're going to go over a lot. I have rewritten these slides, I think, at least eight times because there's a lot of like circular definitions and then there's some acronym salad. And, but I promise it will be fun and it will make sense. It's just kind of, it's, it's like picking a place to start is kind of hard, but I think I've got it. Uh, we're going to start with what is WebAssembly because I think that's a decent question to start with. We'll talk about the history. We'll say no, but really what is WebAssembly? We'll talk about using WebAssembly in Node.js. We'll talk about why you'd use WebAssembly, and we'll talk about what's next. So what is WebAssembly? It's complicated. <laughs> Let's break it down. First of all, WebAssembly, the technology, and this will be important, WebAssembly, the technology, allows us to compile other languages down into bytecode that runs in near-native performance in WebAssembly runtimes. This might sound vague. It's going to get less vague, I promise. <laughs> The thing about WebAssembly is it is neither web, strictly, nor is it assembly. <laughs> so oh, I'm going to stop doing that. Um, anyways, uh, WebAssembly isn't strictly web because there are runtimes that do not run in browsers or in Node. There are runtimes for IoT devices. There are runtimes for all sorts of different platforms. So it's not strictly web-based. And it's not assembly because assembly, by definition, is something that targets a certain chipset. And WebAssembly does not target a certain chipset. It targets a certain runtime. But it is very assembly-esque. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that uh, with an example here in a bit. But first, let's talk about like, the history, because um, it's kind of interesting and a little important. So pre-2015, we had NACL and ASM.js. And we were starting to like work our way towards uh, containable code and safe code, things like that. And uh, NACL was not meant to be an open source all the way project. So that was interesting. And then ASM.js also just used a subset of JS. So the performance was a little, not as much as they wanted it. So in 2015, the WebAssembly Working Group was established with the cooperation of major browser vendors and a few other large companies. By 2017, we had support in all major browsers, and that still continues to this day. In 2017-ish, it was kind of hard to actually pin down a date, um, but support dropped in Node.js in 857. In 2018, the W3C published the first working drafts for the WebAssembly Working Group. In 2019, WASI, which we'll go over in a bit, was announced by Mozilla. And in November 2019, the Bytecode Alliance, which is a group that oversees the WASI project, was founded. No, but what is WebAssembly really? You gave me this real vague definition, Cass. Can you, can, you, can you kind of go over it a little more for me? So WebAssembly itself is kind of a loaded term because we use the term to talk about the technology, but we also use the term to talk about the specification for the bytecode. So to uh, kind of undo any uh, confusion, I'm going to say WebAssembly when I mean the technology, and I'm going to say WASM when I'm talking about the specification for the bytecode. Hopefully that clears some things up. There's also an acronym salad to get through, so let's get started. There will be a quiz. No, no there's not actually going to be a quiz. Um, so WASM is short for WebAssembly, and that's why I kind of use it to help with the overloaded terms. WAT is human-readable WebAssembly text format, and this is what looks a lot like assembly when you look at it, is WAT. Then you've also got WASI, which is the WebAssembly system interface. And, and this allows WebAssembly to make calls outside of uh, the WebAssembly code itself, like being able to communicate with a file system, network calls, things like that. 
So this is an example of what. Uh, this would print console.log hi. Um, it does look quite a bit like assembly in that you've got you know, um, very succinct instructions, very basic instructions, kind of line up one by one. Um, you've, got, you've got memory buffers. You have to pass the offsets. There's very little memory management. There is no garbage collection in WebAssembly yet. <laughs> so, yeah, it's very WebAssembly-esque. Oh, that was a lot of slides. There we go. So let's talk a little bit more about WASI, because I mentioned what it is, but why it's important is um, a little different. WASM makes the code portable, right? When we compile down to WASM, we have bytecode that can run in any WebAssembly runtime. WASI makes applications portable. It's the interface surrounding it, like I said, that allows you to go to file system, network calls, um, all sorts of different calls that you would not necessarily be able to access with just WebAssembly straight up. Uh, things like even console.log. Uh, running the most basic uh, hello world in the web is not uh, doable with just WASM. You need WASI on top of that to declare what console.log actually is. It's very similar. I like to compare WASI to like the standard I.O. libraries for C or POSIX libraries for C, where like those are implemented on all the different chipsets so you can move your C code everywhere you want. Sim it's a similar thing with WebAssembly. You've got the runtime and WASI, which are implemented for every single set up, and then you've got the code, which is moved across each platform. So we'll talk a little bit about how this works in terms of how we use it. What you do is you'll first write code in Rust or C++. We're going to do Rust today, very simple Rust program. Uh, then you compile that to WASM. Then you load that WASM into a runtime using JS for now. There's some runtimes that are kind of wanting to go away, from, which is fine. Uh, but in this case, we'll use Node. And we'll use a WASI implementation so that we can write to console.log and write to file system from WebAssembly. And then you run your exported functions from JS much like you would a JavaScript module. Uh, it will export functions, and you can run those functions in WebAssembly from JavaScript. So I'm going to talk about using it with Node. What we're going to do is we're going to write Rust code that, well, we're going to view Rust code. I did not sleep well last night, so I'm not going to try to live code. <laughs> um, we're going to print string hello world to standard out and to a file. We're going to compile the Rust code using WASI into WASM. <laughs> Sorry, there's just so many acronyms. And then Node.js code will use the experimental WASI module to load and run our WASM. I'm surprised I got through that in one go. <laughs> So let's go into the demo. I'm going to get out of my slides, and I'm going to go over to my, oh, I closed my code editor. Nice. Yes, it worked. Awesome. All right. The, the demo commence. All right. So what I've got here is I've got a WASM module folder, and um, that is where my Rust code lives. And then I have a, a basic Node.js application uh, with run WASM.js. And then I've moved wasm-module.wasm. Yeah, my naming could use a little work there. Um, out into the main folder so that's easily accessible by the JavaScript. So let's take a look at the Rust code. Um, I got this from the, uh, one of the WASM example sites. Um, it was less about what the Rust could do and more about like, getting this demo working. So we have, um, we're calling an F file system. We're printing hello world to standard.out. And then we're saying create a file at hello world slash hello world.txt. And then we're writing hello world to that file. So um, next, we'll look at the JavaScript code. OK. So in. Uh, this, we are pulling out read file because we need to read the WASM file in order to execute it. Uh, we're pulling in WASI so that we can tell our WebAssembly, here's, how, here's, here's a console.log function, here's a file uh, handler function, or file writer function. Um, yeah. And so when we instantiate WASI, what we do is we pass anything we want to pass to the WASM from Node uh, in through these parameters. So we've got arguments, we've got environment, and we've got what here is called pre-opens. And what this means is I'm giving WASI permission to access this part of my file system. So um, you have to tell it. I'm, so when it writes, tries to write to hello world, it's going to write to this directory that we're sitting in. 
Finally, um, you import WASI. Um, it is still definitely experimental in Node, so we'll have to use a command line function as well, a command line uh, argument as well uh, to get this to run. But once we do, uh, we'll compile the WebAssembly, we'll read from our WASM file, and then we'll instantiate the WebAssembly code once it's been uh, compiled, and then we'll start it. So let's get this running. So first thing I'm gonna do is let's pretend I just wrote my um, Rust code here. So I'm gonna go into CD WASM module, and I'm gonna say cargo build. Are you kidding me? All right, that's fine, that's fine. We can figure this out. Luckily, I wrote myself a readme. Always write yourself a readme. Copy. So the reason I'm, I'm doing this is I need to tell Cargo to compile the Rust to web, a WebAssembly 32-bit with WASI uh, available and that I want it to be in the release folder. And so I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna paste this. All right, so um, that was fast. Oh, because uh, I already built it and it's just kind of sitting there. <laughs> so then I would uh, CP the file back out into the root, but since it didn't change, I'm not actually gonna copy that particular comp. And then I'm going to CD out into the root folder, ls. You can see uh, wasm module.wasm. And then uh, we are going to You're going to go back to the README, because like I said, when we run it with Node Experimental, as you can see here, I've got this flag, Experimental WASI Unstable Preview 1. Uh, that is how we tell Node, yes, I want to use WASI, please let me. <laughs> so there we go. Fantastic, all right, so um, yay, we've got Hello World and Standard out, and uh, we've got in our Folder now a hello world.txt with hello world on it. And that's done in Rust. So um, no, so uh, Node.js loaded the Rust code, but the Rust code actually ran via wasm bytecode to complete these steps. So now that we've done the demo, goodness, it is really hot up here. <laughs> so why would you use WebAssembly? One of the first things that people tend to think of is if you need to do something that Node.js or JS isn't necessarily good at, um, heavy computation, um, machine learning, JavaScript is good at machine learning, but if, you've if you want to run it in a different language, that's fine too. Um, another great thing is not compiling native modules anymore. Who here would never like to compile another native module again? <laughs> yeah, I, I, could tell, I could tell the contributors because they went <laughs> um, Yeah, the idea is instead of compiling a native module every time you npm install, you would ship WASM code that would run in Node without any other alter, uh, alterations. So you could do C libraries, Rust libraries, um, name a language, it probably has at least an experimental WASM compiler. So um, it's kind of an interesting use case. Uh, the other thing is, I was, I was really interested in the last talk about sandboxing environments. Um, there are actually uh, serverless providers who use WASM as a sandbox to run user code instead of just um, you know, running on a container. Um, it's containerless, which is really nice for performance. Um, so yeah, that's another situation. So what's next? I hesitate to say this. WebAssembly's in kind of a lull right now. Um, a lot of proposals are still kind of staying there, but the outside of the proposal arena and the, the working group arena, companies are jumping on this. Um, WebAssembly is becoming more and more popular. Uh, like I said, containerless infrastructure seems to be like the new, like, the new shiny thing to do with WebAssembly is to create your own containerless infrastructure where you can just run user code and it's sandboxed and it's safe and it can only do what you tell it it can do. Um, the good news is uh, one thing that happened in the um, Bytecode Alliance is Wasm Time 1.0, which is their dedicated Wasm runtime, shipped to 1.0. So they have declared it production ready. So if you're wondering, is WebAssembly production ready? Yeah, at least Wasm Time is. So, and there are a lot of proposals still in flight. Um, garbage collection, yep, they know. They're working on it. 
<laughs> garbage collection's hard, <laughs> but uh, it's, there's definitely still work to be done and work that is being done. It just kind of feels like a lull at this point, and I feel like it's, it, we're pushing through and we just need to get through it. Well, by we, I mean the folks at the Byte Code Alliance and, w, and W3C Working Group. I'm not actually a member, I'm just a fan. <laughs> well, anyway. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate your time. I know this talk went super fast. It's a billion degrees up here. I don't know if you can see, but I am completely drenched <laughs> like in sweat. I am, I, so I think I went a little fast, but you know what? I'll let y'all go do the photo. Remember, we're not going to lunch, straight to lunch. We're going to the photo in the lobby. And I'd like to thank you very much for your time. And if you are interested in the code or the slides, uh, there's a GitHub link there, which has a link to the slides and has all the code in it. So thank you very much.